you, Lauren. Okay, so what are the main impacts of maritime activities on land? Uh, uh, it's a complex question. Um, and we have focused our uh, attention in the MSP LSI project on using World Trade Organization value chain approaches to begin to understand uh, the operation of key maritime sectors and then to piece together information based on the different segments in the value chains about the spatial footprint of those sectors and the spatial implications of those sectors that territorial planning might need to consider. So in trying to sort of illustrate for you what that might be uh, or what the picture might reveal, uh, I've highlighted here, you probably can't see the detail, uh, just one example that we uh, have um, um, explored in our case studies uh, that we've been undertaken in the project, which relates to offshore wind energy development in the, uh, the Dutch uh, North Sea. Uh, and what this has done is enabled us to follow the value chain uh, of offshore wind energy from its initial development phase through manufacture and assembly of the different components that uh, go into wind farms, uh, the transportation uh, issues that they present uh, leading up to the installation and commissioning of the wind farms. Then the activities associated with the operation and maintenance of those wind farms and ultimately decommissioning. Now, uh, to date, there's only one wind farm, offshore wind farm, that's been decommissioned, but in the future, that is likely to be something that is increasingly significant. And what we have done is uh, piece together information on the different actors in those different segments of the value chain to come up with a spatial picture uh, of uh, the, uh, that particular value chain. And what that reveals is that this is an activity that is obviously has a major spatial footprint in the sea, but it supports employment not just on the coast, and that's very significant. If you actually look at the uh, players involved in that value chain, they are spread right across uh, Europe. Uh, they are, in the Dutch case, there are a lot of uh, oil and gas uh, um, companies that are moving into this area. Uh, Denmark is a major supplier. So there is a, um, a wide uh, employment uh, impact and implication. There is, a, um, there is a requirement for seawood and landwood infrastructure, and that isn't, again, not necessarily on the coast. Actually, quite surprisingly, because of uh, various technical issues, sometimes the connections to the grid need to be in land. Um, but I think, in, more strategically, it's important to recognise that, uh, that the uh, development on, in the sea is a major component in this restructuring of our energy supply towards more low carbon uh, sources and that we, uh, the North Sea uh, as a whole, could lead to uh, supplying more than 12% of U U the EU's electricity pie by 2030 and significantly more as we look to the future. So marine planning is a key component in the, uh, uh, um, in the framework conditions that are guiding the sector development, but actually spatial planning on the land also has a role to play. So that's just one example of what we've been looking at. Um, and what that begins to reveal is the sheer complexity of this subject. And it's not just related to socioeconomic interactions, there's biogeochemical interactions and governance factors are all part of this complicated mix. 
Um, but what we are, have uh, focused on in the project is to, to devise a method that enables people to step into the complexity. Um, and a critical component of that is a scoping phase uh, which allows people to focus in a purposeful way on those land-sea interactions that are perhaps most critical at any point in time. And then, having undertaken that scoping phase, we are, we've given guidance on how you might uh, uh, analyse governance structures that relate to particular land-sea interactions, as well as the value chain analysis that I've just described. And drawing those uh, strands of thinking together, uh, it, uh, people can then uh, come up with recommendations for good management of L LSI. And I think the key point uh, I want to make is that isn't just a marine spatial planning, maritime spatial planning uh, issue, it's a territorial planning issue. And we should increasingly be thinking in all our endeavors of the land and the sea as one space and territorial planning covering both. Thank you.